As children, we grew up watching cartoons on Saturday mornings and before school. We had our favorite silly and colorful cartoons that we inevitably grew out of. But some of us ended up growing into a different form of animation, some of which revolve around human and more adult themes. That animation being anime. Unlike in America, though, anime is normally adapted from comics or manga if you go by the Japanese terminology. Some anime make us laugh, some make us cry, and some are just plain overall astounding. Today on Nerd Sector, we'll be going over some of the best anime. A warning though, there will be spoilers ahead. Full Metal Alchemist is an anime that every single die-hard anime fan has seen. When it was first being released back in 2004, it was played on Cartoon Network's late night show Adult Swim and Toonami. This made it many people's first real anime, and it's truly a good one to start with. What happens is Edward and Alphonse Elric lose their mother to illness at a young age. In this universe, the science of alchemy exists, and alchemy is the science of reconstructing matter and has many taboos, one of which they break to bring their mother back to life. As punishment for breaking the taboo, Edward loses a leg, and Alphonse loses his entire body. Edward then sacrifices his arm to seal his younger brother's soul into a suit of armor so he would not lose him too. He gets metal prosthetic limbs, joins the military at a young age due to being a prodigy, and begins his quest to find the Philosopher's Stone so that he may get his and his brother's bodies back. There are two series, which are the original Full Metal Alchemist and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, four movies, five video games, and coming soon, a live-action movie adaption. Okay, so get this. One Punch Man follows the story of Saitama, a man who decided to become a professional superhero for fun. If he gets bored with it, he plans to quit. Saitama has godlike strength and speed and is extraordinarily plain looking. He also unwillingly has a student. That student is a cyborg named Genos who vows vengeance on the cyborg that destroyed his home. Genos feels that he will never be strong enough without Saitama's training. The series was started as a superhero parody webcomic, then was adapted into a manga, then adapted into an anime. It pokes fun at many common superhero tropes and even pokes fun at itself. It's also one of the most critically acclaimed series of 2015. ReZero's plot is a bit, well, complicated. A young man named Subaru is at a convenience store, steps outside, and then is instantly transported to an alternate reality where if he dies, he respawns as if he were in a video game. This is caused by an apparently evil witch who is trying to destroy the world and needs vessels embodying the seven deadly sins. Subaru seems to be the perfect candidate for pride, but doesn't even realize this. He makes friends who die, but he dies, so they're all resurrected. So that's okay, right? The answer to that question is a big fat no. His repeated deaths and witnessing those he cares about die along with him breaks his psyche, and he must go through intense character development and growth. In the end, he always gets it right somehow, and everyone lives. Despite his character being one that always wins in the end, he still has many flaws and weaknesses. Most anime characters like him are perfect, and that change right there is refreshing. Okay, so. What do you get when you mix a rich boy that's trying to run away from his stalker ex-girlfriend and a guy with amnesia that ends up becoming best friends with the rich guy and also somehow falls in love with the stalker ex-girlfriend? This show. Without spoiling too many plot points, that is the best summary I can give you. The show is funny, it is well written, and well animated. It's a show that's much less action based and much more story driven. Overall, the show is executed very well, and highly recommended. This anime has no action. It has no deaths, and no super intense drama. It follows a young boy named Shuichi, who turns out to be a transgender girl. Her older sister doesn't understand she's want to be a girl, her friends support her, and she ends up with a girlfriend who doesn't realize that she's a she, and the girlfriend supports and understands her in the end. These are themes not often found in anime, let alone mainstream media. Many people in the LGBTQA plus community adore this anime due to how well and how realistically the situation Shu is in is portrayed. Another reason many people love this series is because it looks as if it were made from a watercolor painting. So this next show, people either love it or hate it. There is no real in-between. Sword Art Online began as a hack.slash fanfiction. It eventually grew into a worldwide phenomenon as one of the most critically acclaimed anime of this decade. 
It follows Kirito, a teenager who gets trapped inside a virtual reality video game with thousands of other people. They must fight to survive, because if they die in the game, they will die in real life. The only way out is to beat the game, and that is what Kirito aims to do. People fell in love with these characters and the story. It's a highly recommended anime. It's also a prequel to the next show I'll be talking about. Okay, so this show was made before Sword Art Online, but the story comes after it. The gist of the story is the same in the fact that you must play the game, and if you die in it, you can never play it again. The big difference between the two is that the characters have flaws. Unlike Kirito, instead of being perfect and everyone just instantly bonding with and loving him, Arita has problems and flaws. For example, he suffers with his body image and self-worth. You'll always see the main character as overweight and too short for his age. But sometimes in the glimpse of a mirror or in a photo, you'll actually see what he really looks like. That's right, you see the way Arita sees himself throughout the series. Because of the dynamic characters in this series, it ranks above its prequel. Natsume ends up inheriting two things from his grandma. The ability to see spirits and a book filled with names. His grandma went around gathering the names from many spirits. The names were put into the book, and that bound the spirits into servitude to his grandmother. Natsume makes it his goal to release all the spirits bound by the book. If he fails, a very large cat demon plans to eat him. If he succeeds, the cat demon will probably still try to eat him. This show is well written in the fact that it balances the action and the downtime very well. The latest season of this anime was released this past winter. If you enjoy classical music and crying, this will be the perfect show for you. It follows the musical prodigy Kosei, who is worked and molded into a human metronome by his dying mother. When she dies, he has a mental breakdown and can no longer play. He retires from piano at the ripe old age of 12. Two years go by and he still doesn't play the piano. It takes a spunky young violinist girl to get him back into playing. Unfortunately, this girl also has a big secret that just might shatter his world all over again. With this anime, the animation is flawless, and the soundtrack is gorgeous. The plot is very bittersweet, slower paced, and all the characters are likable. On top of all that, the series has won three awards so far. To put the plot very shortly, it's Cowboys in Space. It's an anime that is so popular that very rarely something bad is said about it. It has won many major awards, has been mentioned by popular YouTubers saying it's their favorite anime of all time, and is considered a classic in the world of anime. In 2012, an anime convention known as Anime Nebraskan got the chance to auction off a copy of an autographed Cowboy Bebop movie script for charity for $850, surpassing the largest bids of the event by far. People literally ran across the convention just to get the chance to bid on this script. It's a perfect example of just how loved and how popular this anime is. So this has been Nerd Sector and some of the best anime. Did I miss any? Do you think something else should have been on this list? Should I have not included something on this list? In the comments down below, let me know. And with that, I upload every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I hope you have a good day. I hope you have a good night wherever you might be. This has been Katie Cat. Subscribe, maybe.